everyone. Welcome to you. My name is Jeannie D, and it's so good to be back in the loft. Yeah, it feels welcome like I back, been here darling. Ages. Welcome Thank back. You. Hope Thank you had a great weekend out there. I'm Bonnie Bully. So, how was your trip? What happened? Okay, so last week I went to London for the film premiere and to interview the cast of the new film that's coming out called uh, A United Kingdom. Now, it's starring David Oyelowo and Rosamund Pike, who I got to interview. And I have to tell you, it is the most beautiful movie. When I watched it, I sobbed like a child. And, and it's, it's about, about the love story of Sorette and Sorette Ruth. And Ruth. Yeah. Okay, so basically, it's about how Botswana became a democracy and, and they had a president. And yeah. funny enough, the, the president is still a relative of Sorette yes, and Ruth. Is. It is the most outstanding story. You absolutely have to go and watch it. It was incredible. And then meeting David was just... He's an incredible... Actor. What a phenomenal actor. And yeah, one of my dreams is to work with him yeah. one day. <laughs> and Rosamund Pike is unbelievable. She's I'm such sure. a fantastic actress. Sure. So go watch the movie. And it's Terry Petto's in it. Oh, and Terry, Terry Petto's in it, of course. She shines in it. Yeah. She is amazing. I'm Absolutely. actually going to be shooting a campaign with her soon, and she's my favorite human being. At the moment. She's <laughs> That's South awesome. Yeah. Uh -huh. Today in the loft, we have former Miss SA Tulisa Tolle, who will be chatting to us about what she's been up to. She's also an internationally sought after speaker. Exactly. We're going to yeah. be speaking to her about some of the covers that she top, uh, that, uh, that some of the top. top Topics that, that she covers, she covers. Yes, when also, she does her yeah. talking. We also chat to a psychologist who helps us mm. overcome the fear of success. Amazing. Yeah. Now, we want to hear from you. The question that we're posing on our social media today is, have you gone through something, a hard time or a beautiful time, that made you grow? What have you gone through in your life that has created growth within you? And yeah. we'll be hearing from you online. All you need to do is tweet us at Afternoon Chat using our official hashtag, Afternoon Express. Otherwise, visit our Facebook page at Afternoon Express. Otherwise, we would love to hear from you. We are live, so give us a call on 0839133728. <laughs> I've always got to prevent myself I know, from I saw your eyes. I was, was like, I was like, let me join in. <laughs> <laughs> Danilo's in the kitchen. <laughs> Indeed, South Africa, good afternoon. I'm Danilo Acristo, and I'm very excited today because, as you know, spring has sprung and everybody around us has been complaining about the fact that it's not summer yet, that the weather is still nice and cold. And so I just want you to own that, just own the fact that it is still spring. And today on the show, Clem is going to be showing us how to create some spring drinks because it's kind of not really time for tea just yet anymore. Like, I'm kind of yes. over the teas that I've been having in winter. And it's not quite summer, so I can't have my typical G's and T's and all those nice ice blocks. So I want you to show me something that's very springy. Sure. Today. So I'm playing around with the Willy Spring drinks today and making extra flavored drinks with them just to like step up a, mm. a really good product already and make it more to mm. your taste. Mm. And you know what? You spoke about those G's and T's. A little bit of G's in this won't hurt at all. Oh, really? Okay. So I'm going to to spice it up slightly if you are feeling in one of those moods. And also, I hope that it hasn't been a blue Monday for you because it's really blue for me today. As you can tell, we're not cooking in the kitchen today, but you got an incredible experience to go out and enjoy cooking with somebody else today. Exactly. What's wrong with my cooking? Uh, it's, it's just, it lacks nothing. It's amazing, it's okay. amazing. So I got to visit the Discovery Vitality Healthy Food Studio. Awesome. And got another lesson in some healthy food cooking. Right, so you'll really learn cool. from Clem and his experience too, right here on Afternoon Express. Speaking about springing into things, let's spring into the show. Thank you, Dindalo, and that looks amazing. I hope you're going to make us something delicious for dinner. Now, former Miss SA and all-round superwoman Tuli Satoli join her, joins us in the loft today. And since passing on her title in 2006, she has been gracing stages all over the world as a motivational speaker. Today, she chats to us about the power of choice and how to optimise your personal growth and achievement. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you, ladies. You're an absolutely exquisite woman. We've always known that. Yeah. Thank you. Now, you were crowned Miss South Africa in 2005, and this is this thought has always occurred to 11 me. 11 years ago. 11 yeah. years ago. That once you get crowned Miss South Africa, it's such a huge milestone that yeah. there must be an incredible pressure to do something that surpasses that for the rest of your life, right? And um, how, how, how yeah. has your journey been since then? Because you absolutely have done amazing things. Mm -hmm. I think it's that pressure that led me to where I am today. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's great pressure because the Miss South Africa's that came before and preceded um, uh, before I came on, um, they've set the example. You know, Basitsana is one of them. Jackie Mufuking, yeah. Penis, Peggy Sue, um, Joanne Strauss. Joanne Strauss, All yeah. of them have set their tone. Um, and all the South Africa's that come afterwards want to get to that certain level, and I'd hope so. Yeah. Um, they're role models as well. Um, but besides being in South Africa, we're also human. Yeah, absolutely. And um, that's a part that I just, you know, life somehow just made me human. Um, and I realized that I went back into my human way of life after being Miss South Africa, not knowing how to adjust, after having had the crown and after being exposed yeah. to now like, okay, this is reality, but who am I? Because mm. one moment I was a student, third year town and regional planning at Wits wow. University, the next moment, I'm in South Africa, which I didn't see it coming. 
Um, I know people prepare for it, but I did not see it coming. Um, and then soon after that, it's like the next best girl comes in and you're like, old news. Yeah. Um, and you have to recreate yourself yeah. and find some sort of stability in that foundation and somehow think, okay, this is who I am. And once you're able to define yourself and you're able to go out to the world and say, this is who I am, as unique as I am, take me as I am. Wow. Um, so it's been quite a journey. I'm sure. <laughs> How yeah. did you become a motivational speaker? Um, I've had key turning points in my life. The first one when I was 16 when my father passed away. Second one, of course, when I was 21 and I was crowned Miss South Africa. And the greatest one was the whirlwind of love of my life, which went horribly wrong, but two kids later, oh. um, and some sort of breakdown and all of that. It's kind of like, who am I? I don't wow. feel like I'm only a mother. I mean, I was a mother, but yeah. however, um, I felt empty after that. And, I, I needed to find myself again. And I remember I just thought, you know, let me just go and roll for coaching because mm. it was a cheaper way for me then to kind of get coaching, but without having to pay the extra excess mm. fees. Yeah. So I started coaching. And strangely, at that moment, while I was um, studying this, I was studying at UCT, um, I got an opportunity to go speak. And I thought, this is a calling. Because as I was speaking about my experiences, as I was speaking about my experience as a single mother and the position that I found myself as a woman who depended on a man, as, as a woman who lost her identity after being crowned Miss South Africa, that I was healing. Wow. And it just gained momentum. And it's still healing. It's um, not that that is still having a hold on wow. me. However, as I heal, I now want to heal others. And I want to share the wisdom that I have gained with others so that people can have shortcuts and not having to learn this over a period of eight years like that I did. Amazing. That's incredible. Um, so rather learn in an hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, coming up with that content and I suppose having the confidence to be able to share what's happened to you, mm -hmm. it, it takes a lot. Did you have any kind of positive influences in your life, almost like a mentor as well? I'm always so impressed with the Miss South Africans because after they've won, it's almost like they've been to finishing school, don't you find? Yeah. They just know how yeah. to communicate and what to yeah. say. So who was your kind of inspiration to to you know, propel you into having the confidence to share your story? Um, I can't say there was one person. I picked up, and I still do, from a whole lot of people. I like yeah. one attribute of this person. I think, wow, I like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I want to encompass that into myself. Um, I know and I've learned that you don't look at someone, envy them, and want to be them, mm. but rather say and bless their attributes and say, wow, mm. I would like to take strength from yeah. that. Yeah. And I remember soon after um, having left my then fiancé, um, I remember thinking, you know what, I'm not the first woman to go through this and I won't be the last. Mm. So to all women of the past, please give me your strength to continue. Wow. Because that that's where consciousness is. All strength lies from there. I mean, it's like giving birth. I remember when I was giving birth, I thought, I'm not the first, I'm not the last. Can some woman just tell me how to get through this 19 <laughs> hours? Strength. But that's anyway, um, that's just how I've now lived my life, is that if I see something that I like, I would like to shadow it on myself yeah. um, and not be that person, but still be oh. truly unique. Yeah. with taking on um, the attribute yeah. of You know, you person. said something interesting just now about coming up with content. And essentially, you actually have to be the content. Yeah. You, you know, motivational speakers don't just get off on stage and then just say a bunch of no, words. No. It, it's drawn from an experience and, yes. and they sap the knowledge out of yeah. that experience. Yeah. What was this experience that led you to talk about the power of choice? Um, I think many women and I was one of them where I was caught up, should I stay or should I leave? Um, and I'm talking about my relationship with the father of my kids. I did not know how to move from that, where wow. this is a choice that everybody for all is gonna know about because mm. I'm in a public space. Yes. space. Um, and of course, being a single mother is not desirable and all the judgments that I was afraid of getting and the life that I would be leaving, for what? Yeah. I don't know what was ahead of me in the and future. And the feelings of failure. So that, yeah experience of having to make the choice is what propelled me to where I am. And of course, like you mentioned, every public speaker has a story. Yeah. And that's why they are public speakers. That's why they are motivational speakers, because they have a story to tell, yeah. to share. And people relate to that because people have gone through those experiences. And many people have come to me and said, thank you so much for sharing. 
who never thought a person like you was so human. No, I know, I'm blown away um, sitting here listening. Okay, I wish we yeah. had more time because I think you've yeah. got such an important message to share because I think a lot of women do feel the same way you do. Yeah. But we're going to get to you a little bit later as yeah, well in the show. Great. Right now, let's cross over to Dan. Indeed. So more from our beautiful guests after the break right here on Afternoon Express. Plus, this incredible lady is going to be joining us on the show. Her name is Musa Masiza, and she'll be telling us more about personal growth. And we're asking you in this particular post to so go and find this picture on our Facebook page, Afternoon Express. We're asking you the question, what have you overcome in your life that helped you to grow? We want you to share your story with us, and I could be reading them live on air, but I'm only going to be reading the comments that are coming through from this post. So go and find it on our Facebook page, and I'll read them there. Um, one of the ones from Shanaz that I wanted to read out says that she left her husband four years ago people said that she was brave but she felt really scared at the time and it's a decision she really doesn't regret and even to this day it's something that she felt like she grew a lot from so if you want to share your story of how you've overcome something and that's grown you as an individual share with us on our facebook page afternoon express the motivation monday continues after this welcome back to afternoon express and we're back on our couch with Wonder Woman extraordinaire, and of course, mm -hmm. Miss former Miss South Africa, Tuli Satoli. Welcome back. Yeah, thank uh, you. Now, Tuli, let's talk about the path, mastering your path, finding mm -hmm. your path, first of all. And many of us can sometimes feel like we're not reaching our full potential and sometimes mm -hmm. be debilitated by that feeling and not actually do something about it. But how do you cross that line into potential? I always say to my clients, I now coach as well, and I always say to them that not making a choice is still making a choice. Mm -hmm. And to get to a point where you should make a choice, whether it's A or B, B or X or Y, you've got to take responsibility for your own life. You've got to realize that the thoughts that you think, the actions that you take, the feelings that you feel are you and no one else is doing that for you. Oh. And at some point in time, then you have to realize that if I think these thoughts, I'm responsible for it. I'm the one who's decided to eat that burger instead of vegetables, therefore, you mm -hmm. know, I'm the one who's chosen not to leave, but I'm miserable and I'm complaining, therefore. And when you complain, oftentimes people complain about things that they can do something about, but they don't want to take the risk. So the key to get into a point where you're powerful in your choice is to take responsibility for your life. No mm. one lives you but you. Okay, but taking responsibility with your life, I know we've discussed it to the nth end. Sometimes you end up in a position in life and you go, oh, how did I get here? Whether it's good or bad. Mm. And sometimes you, it's hard to feel like you deserve the life that you want or the position that you're in. So then how do you take ownership of those choices and almost learn to make better choices without sounding selfish? I think that's the key word is selfish. People think that selfish means you're selfish. Yeah. Yet sometimes being selfish, like we're told in the aeroplane that mothers, please oxygenate yourself before you have to ex oxygenate your child. Being selfish is a good thing. And mm. you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of anyone. Yeah. Before you can even give love to any partner. You've got to be complete within yourself. And that will take care of your self-worth issues. When you start thinking, you know what, I'm worthy. Yeah. I feel good enough. I'm okay being alone. And being alone does not mean nobody loves you. It does not mean you're actually alone in this no, space. No, I'm alone it's... and uh, a lot of people love me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so getting to that point where you no longer blame anything outside of yourself, but you truly say that if I feel like, how did I get you? You've got to say, I made those choices. Yeah. Wow. By being quiet and not doing anything about other things, I made that choice. Mm. So you have to face it. As people say, face your fears. Yeah. Face your fears, face your past mistakes mm. and take responsibility for them. Yeah. I've also taken responsibility for the role that I played in the breakdown of my marriage, for instance. Yeah. And there is a role that I played. So some people like to say, ah, oh, it was your fault. You did this, you did that, you did that. But also yeah. take responsibility for all the bad and the good things. We like yeah. to take responsibility for the good things. And like, yeah, yeah, I did by myself. Yeah. I ran the Olympics, yes, it was me who ran. But yeah. when the bad things happen, you blame everyone else and say, I didn't get the support that yeah. I needed. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to take proper full responsibility for it. And the problem with mistakes is that they're often good kisses. <laughs> wow. They really wow. are. You're right. You're right. <laughs> that was left <laughs> field. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> I should not be labeled as mistakes, actually. They're learning curves in life. Yeah. And Froggy. children will never learn to walk if they did not fall in yeah. the process. Exactly. Children don't just get up and walk. I mean, you know, they, they trip and they, yeah. you know, but that's how life is. Yeah. I mean, the ending of a marriage can leave you feeling like with immense feelings of failure and exactly. just feeling like I'm, I've failed dismally. Yeah. And how do you overcome setbacks? 
What are, what are the key elements that you need to overcome great setbacks? I think the greatest thing for me, I remember, um, you know, for, for many people, it, it doesn't really work, especially in this day and age, but spirituality, you've got to have a higher source that you account to. But that's not so religion. It's not, it's There's not a big religion. difference yeah, between religion. I, I think that's I why I'm putting it in that way. Not, that yeah. Yeah. You've religion. got to have something that gives you strength, something yeah. that you don't know where it comes from, something that you can call a miracle or whatever it is, whether it's going to be a tree, a shrub that you worship, <laughs> or it's God, or it's Jesus, something or something. But there's got to be better. something that yeah. inspires you that's bigger than you. Yeah. Because that's what's going to take you to the next level. If you Absolutely. aspire to be someone of a human level, when they do something wrong, you also become disappointed and you fall with them in that yeah. way. So you've mm. got to have something bigger than you to aspire to, something yeah. that leads you to your greatness, something when you say, you know what, I'm asking for this, you actually believe you're going to get it and you actually get it and you thank it. Mm. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And spirituality plays a great role in overcoming, I think, obstacles and also always, always reminding yourself that I can do better, yeah. Yeah. that I am taking charge and for as long as I'm taking charge, I will get to where yeah. I want to go. Tell us some of the stages you've spoken on and audiences that you've shared your knowledge with. Sure, I speak for corporate clients, I do motivational talks for sales teams, so um, predominantly my clients are the banks, which is very strange. I didn't wow. work it out that way. Yeah. And what's amazing is how when I started my business, um, I didn't just decide one day I'm going to be a motivation. It just started, it was a gradual thing. Um, and that's how... God works or spirit, whatever you call it, is that once you then even just take a direction, the right direction, everything aligns for you. The universe, wow. the stars essentially say, yes, this is where we want you to happen. And it becomes and exponential. Doors. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I love testing that always because it is a knock-on effect, but it works the other way as well. as well. Like if you're consistently negative and you, you keep on snowing yourself under yeah. bad thoughts and doubting yourself, yeah. then the circle will go yeah, like that. Absolutely. But the more you believe this is what I'm going to be a better me today than what I was yesterday yes. all the time, then actually things do knock on and things change like happiness, relationships, financial, mm -hmm. I suppose, that I know you speak on as well. Yeah. You've missed when your calling. When are you starting <laughs> your motivational speaking? <laughs> oh, it's because I, my, I, I do my own self-help talks in the mirror every morning. Well, you got to, you got to, because no one else can do it for you. You've got to be able to look at yourself honestly and not having people to come tell you things. Yeah. Yeah. So all of that power within you is within you. Mm. It's not outside of you. It's not in a book that you can read. Yes, it can inspire something within you, but you have to take that power within yeah. Wow. And um, as I always say, God sits in your heart. So he drew a little mm. picture of a heart and then put God in there. Yeah. Um, and he'll ask, why are there so many, why are there so many gods? Um, yeah. So I've had to explain that God is just this great thing, but he, you know, he finds space in everybody's heart, even in an ant's heart. Yeah. But, oh. um, so that's how he understands, you know, that greater source and the greater yeah. power. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. My definition of God I, is love, essentially. I, yeah, and that's, absolutely. Mm. I want to take you, put you in my pocket and just have you in my house every day <laughs> and just press play. <laughs> so yeah. It's just so amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for inspiring you. us. You're Thank amazing. You. Thank you, Let's ladies. check and see what Dinala is up to. Sure, man. I'm really loving reading through all the comments you guys are posting online. Also, please don't forget, if you want to share your story with us live on Afternoon Express today of how you've overcome certain obstacles in your life and it's changed you to become a better person for it, give us a call 083-913-3728. That's 083-913-3728. You can call us right now. You'll see also on our Facebook page, there's this post from Musa Masiza, who's joining us after the break right here on Afternoon Express as we speak about the fear of success. And on that post, we're asking you that big, important question question. Uh, what have you overcome in your life that has helped you to grow? We want you to share your story with us. And I wanted to read two of those out. One came from Miss Barbie Nonofiobiz. I hope that's your, your full name on Facebook. says, my fear was to give my love fully to someone else. But today I'm a mother and the love I have for my kids is unconditional and unbreakable. And I don't think I'll love another person more than this. This has made me grow and I was a lady and now I'm a woman because having my children changed me from an irresponsible person to being a responsible woman. Then Juliet Smith says, my mom passed away when I was 14 years old and my dad when I was 18 years old. But being an only child and losing both your parents has made me so much more mature in life at a very early age. And that has helped me to overcome a lot of obstacles too moving forward. Thanks to all of you for being so vulnerable and sharing your stories with us on our Facebook page. Keep them coming through Afternoon Express on Facebook. We'll be right back after the break.
Welcome back. If you've just joined us, we're chatting about overcoming obstacles in life and optimizing your personal growth. We're joined now by research psychologist Musama Siza to learn more about phenomen phenomenon that is a fear of success. Welcome, Welcome to, the to the show. Thank you now, me. let's start off with defining success. What is the definition of success? Like, what does it look like? What does it sound like? What is success? Um, success is a very subjective um, yeah. concept. So the definition of um, success will differ for different people. But basically what it means is when you set goals for yourself, so once you meet those goals, once you reach those goals, once you've worked towards them and you reach them, then you can say that you are successful in that particular goal that you set okay. for yourself. So it will be very different for everybody. Yeah. Most people associate success with having a lot of money, yeah. which is really not the, the same for everyone. Yeah, which everybody. doesn't hurt either. Yes, no, definitely. But success, you can be, if you, like if you don't have a lot of money and you're happy, then I would think that you're successful. Like definitely. my definition for success is, for me personally, is ha having the ability to do whatever I want to do whenever I want to do it. Mm -hmm. That for me would, would deem Absolutely. success for me. Definitely. But now that's why I don't understand how somebody could have a fear of success. What does that mean? Okay, we all want to be successful. Yeah. Everybody wants Totes. to be successful, but with being su successful comes a lot of things. Yeah. So mm. you get more attention from a larger audience rather than from your intimate family and from your friends. Now you have a larger audience audience and with that audience they have more expectations remember when it was just your family just um, your intimate friends and yeah. whatever it would be even if you don't do so well in something you will get positive feedback from them so your friends would say you didn't do so well but next time you can do better yeah. if it's a larger audience it's completely different people are harsh with you so people really fear those kind of things yeah. and also we tend to associate being su successful with being horrible. Remember, this, we associate being successful with having money, and we tend to think once you have a lot of money, you can't, you don't associate with certain people. You think in a different way. You've you got to be a hard ass. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we don't, we don't want to change. People are scared to change to become that. I and can totally relate to that because for a long time, when I first was on television and was becoming famous, mm. I, I used to sabotage so much because I couldn't handle that there were suddenly so many people watching me and that if I were to fail them, mm. I would be mostly disappointed with myself. So I just Definitely. pushed it away for the longest time. But was that your fear or was it the fact that a lot of people, I think, have got like tall puppy syndrome, is that the minute we see somebody else becoming really successful, then people like to bring it down. It was completely And I hate that. Fear. Really? Yeah. Completely. I really think when it comes to um, fear of success, it's more about the self yeah. rather than the people, really. Because what, what happens is that you know you have the skills, right? You have the skills and you know you can do so well. Yeah. But also, you come into this position, you do so well, the expectations from the people also rise. They become more. Wow. The expectations become mm. higher. Therefore, you start thinking, Will I be able to meet the expectations? You have the skills, but will you be able to maintain this, this, these expectations that are getting higher? So people end up being frustrated with themselves and mm. want to quit. Yeah. Because you, you did get all this um, positive feedback from people in the beginning because you were doing so well when you started. Now the, the feedback is completely different. It's negative because you don't know how to do it. Yeah. For, for the higher yeah, yeah, expectations yeah. any longer. I mean, it's sounding like a fear of failure is it's the other side of the coin of fear definitely. of success, right? Mm. Like when I speak about fear of success, I always think it's more about fear of failure more yeah. than fear Absolutely. of success. We, we fear failing when we're at that. We want it so bad, but yeah. when we get there, we don't want to fail. Wow. We don't want to fail ourselves. We don't want to fail the people that believe in you mm. that have these expectations as yeah. well. How does one recognize that they're operating under a fear of success in their lives? Um, there are a number of things, but I'll just mention a few. Um, when you procrastinate, you have this goal. This is the goal you've set for yourself and you keep talking about it. You keep talking, this is what I want. You're not doing anything about it. So you keep procrastinating. I'm going to start doing this next year. I'm going to start with this business next year. Next year comes. You're busy with other things, but you keep on talking about this mm. and you never really get to do it. So you focus on everything around you, but never really what you really want to mm -hmm. do because of all these fears, 
all these things that I just mentioned now. So it, once you procrastinate, you have in five years' time, you're still setting the same goal you had five years ago, then sure. you know yeah. there's definitely something wrong. Yeah. Wow. It's so sad because, I mean, I've come across so many people who've got potential and you can see the potential in it, but there's nothing that you can do to help them because they've got to do it and kind of unlock those Definitely. channels on their own to be able... So what tools do you think people can use or, or what can people do if they can identify now, like, I have a fear of, of success and I've got a fear of doing it? What can they do to, to kind of unlock that okay. to, so that they can achieve their dreams? Um, I think, first of all, you need to be certain to identify what exactly is success for you. Yeah. You, you need to define what success means to you. So these are the goals that I as Musa have because what we also tend to do is we tend to listen to Bonnie, to Jenny, what, they, what success means to them. Mm. And we want to bring all these things together to mean success for ourselves. Wow. You need to first identify and define what it means for you, for Musa. Mm. And once you know what it means for you, once you know what goals you want to achieve, you need to do some research as to how can I reach that goal? Do mm. some reading, consult with people who are successful in that field. Mm. Um, communicate with these people, find out what you need to, what are the steps that you need to take in order to reach that, that goal. So once you've done that, then you can put a plan in place. You can even write a plan. This is how I'm going to do it. And this is the time, how much time I, I need. Because, sorry, that's another thing that, that people tend to have a mistake with. They want mm. to get successful overnight. It actually yeah. takes time to get successful. So you, you need to set time for yourself. If you want to be a doctor, for instance, you need to study for seven years. And you still won't be successful after the seven years. Yeah. You still need <laughs> to yeah. get more experience. Yeah, so you need to have a plan, have a time frame, and then you need to to, to make it practical yeah. and stick to that to the plan that you it's have. It's actually one of my favorite quotes. It takes over 15 years to become an overnight success. Exactly. But you're amazing and totally inspiring. <laughs> I hope that you are being inspired with us on the Afternoon Express just as much as we are. I mean, I'm lit. I'm going to be achieving dreams left, Get right and center. Life, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Let's cross over to Danilo. And if you guys have also caught, caught that success by bug, I hope that you guys win with us on Afternoon Express today. Remember, your skin can tell you exactly what's going on in your body, which is why it is important to ensure that your diet is balanced and contains foods that will contribute to even an even tone and healthy skin too. Today's Dettol Even Tone tip looks at our healthy diet. Skin impurities are often due to digestive problems. Good health starts with good nutrition, so eating plenty of healthy foods such as fruits, raw vegetables and whole grains will leave you with a healthy, glowing skin. Replace the junk food cabinet in your kitchen with healthy snacks such as different fruits and nuts. That way, the whole family can enjoy the nutritional benefits provided by fresh summer foods. Your body will thank you. Now we, we need you to share your even tone tip with us and tell us how you keep it even. Share a selfie on our Facebook page using the hashtag keep it even and you could win one of four fantastic summer selfie hampers which include a Dettol even tone goodie bag. It's got an LG X cam phone and the striker pose selfie stick. Everything you need to show off your healthy and even skin tone. We'll be right back after this. A warm welcome back to Afternoon Express. And because it's a warm welcome back, we thought we'd quench all that warmth mm -hmm. with the summer. Well, no, actually, no, I wish it was summer. You see. It's a spring it, drink. A spring drink that Clem's going to be making us on the show today. Tell us what we got here. Okay. So I'm using the new Willie's range of spring drinks. Mm -hmm. And they are, besides being amazing, they've actually just brought home a few awards. Uh -huh. So at the recent South African Food Review, they not only did they win a category award, but also an overall award in the competition. Oh, my word. It's pretty big. Congrats, Willie's. That's amazing. Well done. Really cool so, stuff. These drinks are not only sugar-free, but they're also preservative-free, okay. which means they're kilojoule-free, which means they're absolutely healthy. healthy. Can we say that? You can. It's great for you. I mean, if you're talking about guilt-free drinking, this yes, is the way this to go. Is it. Okay, cool. So we're already taking these amazing flavors, and we're going to bump them up a little bit more. So we're going to start off with the rose, rose-flavored drink. Tongue tied there. <laughs> so I'm pairing it today with some pomegranates. Pomegranates. Pomegranate rose flavored drink. Sheesh. I mean, how amazing is that? Perfect for spring. Some mint goes in there and some crushed ice. Mm. Now, when I crush ice, I try not to like really 
get it all over the table. Yeah, you want it a little bit chunky, I guess. I want it really chunky because what happens to you, if it's too fine, you're actually just going to dilute the drink. And, and honestly, you don't want that. Yeah, the, honestly, the best way to go and do that is not to use one of those grinder things that you can find at home. It's <laughs> one of the best <laughs> ways. One of the best ways to get your ice to nice and to grind properly <laughs> is to take, put them inside a cloth. Take a whole bunch of these little ice cubes, put them inside a cloth, and just like smash it or use a hammer and just keep yeah. hitting it. That's the fun part of this thing. So Clem's taking all the fun out of it, but he just added his own fun. And you heard me bash it earlier. That's where you got it from. Yeah, you were like, ha ha ha. And I mean, it's spring, so you just got a nice looks cool like, down like right now. That. Yeah. <laughs> so the next one. Is it one... winter? Is it raining in here? Yes, it <laughs> no, is. It's just Absolutely. Clem. So let's do. The next one, cool. Let's do the pomegranate with a coconut Yummy. drink. Oh, that's different. So, some beautiful grenadilla. Mmm. Oh, grenadilla is one of the most refreshing things. But Sour actually, is all heck, this. but delicious. I've actually got some grenadillas ready, ready to be in the pulp removed for me. Cool. So, that goes in there. You delicious. can see what we're kind of doing. We're playing with all the current tropical flavors. Yeah, different color schemes. You've got the red and the green in this one. This one, you're going with the yellows and. Other colors, I guess. <laughs> it is. So, I'm going to ask you to open this one oh, to the no. side slowly so it doesn't spray everywhere. Okay, 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 almost, almost. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I managed. You managed. There we go. And then I'm gonna top it up with some mint as you pour that in. Delicious. So you talk about, we see how we're combining all these amazing flavors. Oh, the smell of this coconut one is delicious. It is so Yummy. refreshing as well. That pineapple also comes through quite nicely. It's all those tropical fruits that you're throwing in there. And for our last drink, mm -hmm. let's take on, we're gonna get really chefy right now, basil Ooh. and cucumber. Oh, that's quite different. Right. And we're going to pair that with some strawberry and mint flavored spring drink. Sheesh. So in goes our cools of strawberry. Mm. Um, oh, strawberry. <laughs> that's funny. A little bit of crushed ice you're throwing in there, layering it up nicely. Can I pass this to you again? Sure, you can. Seeing as you've got some serious bottle, bottling up with skills. See, as I'm the guy that prevents these things from happening. And then some basil goes in. It's quite, it's, it's not that revolutionary. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, don't worry. Nothing to see here. Just a television show. <laughs> this we is can't. Like a, you know, if everyone ever wonders whether we're live ever, like this is proof that we are. Absolutely. So into the last glass. Oh, oh yeah, it's making a volcano. Go for it, go for it. We're, we're celebrating. We're popping bottles. This has been great. I'm <laughs> loving this. So the basil and cucumber pairs beautifully with the strawberry okay. and the mint. Dad, you can top that up, eh? Check Why are you being selfish? Okay, cool. Do that like that. <laughs> Listen, we're talking about personal development on the show today, and I know you're making us delicious drinks, but I, I always thought that I wanted to challenge you to say, like, maybe one day you're going to be hosting your own cooking show, and, you know, you're going to have to do links and stuff. So okay. you were recently cooking with somebody else besides me, so I thought, actually, you know what? You do your own link. Shot for putting me on the spot. Yeah, why not? Do it right. camera. Well, anyway, I recently visited the Woolwoods Vitality Healthy Food Studio, and I got to cook with an amazing chef who taught me about some healthy cooking. Thought I'd bring it back to, this, back to the kitchen today, but first, go check out what I did. Woohoo! <laughs> we all know how important making mindful food choices is, but when it comes to making a dish that's both delicious and healthy, it can clash sometimes. But that's why today, I'm at the Discovery Vitality Healthy Food Studio to get a course on what it takes to merge the two perfectly. Let's go have a look. Clem. How are you? I'm very well, and you? Welcome to the Healthy Food Studio. Thank you so much. I must first ask you, I'm seeing you wearing a chef hat. Am I getting the chef hat as well? I'm not so worried about your hair, but we might have to do something about the beard. <laughs> <laughs> chef, these are some insanely delicious ingredients. What are we making today? Fish is on the menu today. Two different ways. The one is going to be stuffed with some mint, some garlic, some marjoram, wonderful Mediterranean flavors. And, and anchovies, my anchovies, favorite. Anchovies, absolutely. They're delicious and healthy. Uh, and we're going to bake it whole in paper, classic French and poppy art style. The second dish is going to be an Asian twist, full of flavor, lots of garlic, spring onion, peppers in there. We're going to put it in a, a steaming basket and we're going to steam them as individual portions. So that should also be quite delicious. I think full of flavor, both of our recipes. So what are we hoping to teach our guests today? Most important skill that we teach at the Healthy Food Studio is that healthy cooking is delicious. Secondly, we want to teach them how to look for fresh fish and how to fillet their own fish. And then how to put lots of flavor in and how to cook it so that it is succulent and delicious and not dry. That's very important. I'm about to walk away, leave you with the prep. I'm gonna get my apron on and go welcome a few of our guests that have just arrived. Good, looking forward to it.
thank you so much for the invite today. You're welcome. Why did you see the need for the Healthy Food Studio? So getting people to eat healthy sounds like it should be fairly simple because everybody knows what they should be doing, but getting them to actually do it is incredibly complex and difficult. So equipping them with skills and teaching them to love cooking and love healthy food, we really felt was a brilliant way to get them to sustainably change their behaviors as well as the behaviors of their families. As Discovery Vitality, we've had a partnership with Woolworths since 2014, in fact, um, through our Healthy Food Benefit, where we reward our members with 25% cash back for their healthy food purchases in store. And for both of our businesses, it really was 100% aligned with our strategy to try and encourage people to translate those purchases into healthy eating. And there's no real better way to do that than to equip people with the skills to cook those foods in healthy, delicious ways. Welcome to the Healthy Food Studio and to today's Everything Fish class. The first thing that I would like to show you today is how to look for freshness when you are buying a fish from your fishmonger or supermarket. Now we've got a wonderful piece of trout here that is just came in this morning and one of the things that you'll be able to see is the sliminess on here. You can really see it. It's the only time that you are actually quite happy to have some sliminess so on the So the slime fish. is good. That is what you're saying. Definitely. It's, the slime is fabulous. Good you sheen, do want it. A beautiful sheen. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> We're also looking to feel that the flesh is nice and firm. It shouldn't be all soft and mushy and disappear when you're pressing. So if it bounces back, it's good. It's good. Thumbs up. Wonderful pink, fresh red gills inside. You can also see. And then, of course, the eye. It's nice and bulgy and looks quite fresh. And Chef, I think it's also quite important that the fish doesn't smell of fish. Absolutely, absolutely. It should not smell of, fr of fish because then it isn't fresh anymore. So we're going to be stuffing our trout. Mm -hmm. We are going to make a wonderful paste out of mint. This is what makes it wonderful is that um, it's a bit of a different flavor to bring in with fish. It brings a wonderful freshness. And especially with garlic and anchovies, they are best friends. So it makes for wonderful, wonderful flavor. Now we are going to close our parcel so that we can bake it in the oven and basically steam it as well. So you say steam, but it goes in the oven and kind of roasts, but the fish steams inside the bag. Absolutely. It's the classic French preparation in papillot where there is steam building up inside this parcel that cooks the fish. Our next fish dish that we're going to be preparing is going to be our Asian fish, and for that we need fish fillet. Tilapia is actually wonderful because it does not have its own strong flavor. Let me show you um, the way to fillet your fish. So I'm first going to remove the fins. So I'm just going to cut through, and then most important, the structure of the fish is that we want to remove it off the bone, so we're going to be following the bones. Just at the top of the, of the spine here, I'm going to cut. I can feel that that's where the fins were. And I'm just going to, with my normal chef's knife, cut a line so that I know where to follow. Now, I'm simply following my guide, and my hands are nice and clean, and I'm just following the bones. Well, so I came to the Healthy Food Studio to learn so much about cooking. Even though I can cook, I was battling to, to cook healthy meals. So I learned about techniques, I learned about ingredients, I learned about all the things that could make my meals a better meal. Oh, the aroma is absolutely marvelous. It's the ginger, it's fantastic. It's so fresh, I love it. It's got signature Asian flavors. Absolutely, fresh, quick, Really no reason not to, oh. to make this. So we're going to do our seasoning with a little bit of our soy. And we don't need to season our fish. So Melisma is busy putting our fish into our steamer. And then we're just going to top it with this wonderful flavor mixture. Now turn up the heat, get the stock on. You can steam it just over water, but the stock really does give more flavor. Definitely I'll come back for another course. I'm thinking the Food with Friends course because that is, uh, I like to entertain my friends, so that would be very nice for me to show off my cooking skills. It's definitely been an educational and mouth-watering day today. And after visiting the Healthy Food Studio, I can say I'll be cooking with a more healthy conscience from now on. I can't wait to get back to my own Optin Express kitchen and put these amazing dishes and what I've learned into practice.
so awesome. Learning lots of things on the show today. It's a Motivation Monday. And if you're on our Facebook page, Afternoon Express, we're asking you to share your stories of how you've overcome some circumstances in your life. Um, I found some two really cool comments, but I'll read one of them out from Nolun to Kachwa, who says, after passing my matric, my mother didn't have enough money to pay for my college fees. So I had to go work as a domestic worker. I was criticized, laughed at by my friends, but I didn't lose hope. I saved all the money I was earning as a domestic, was so lucky to work for a good lawyer family who motivated me to further my studies. Now I'm a qualified artisan looking after my kids well. So many of these stories are all over our Facebook page at the moment. If you want to be inspired on this Motivation Monday, head over there right now. Afternoon Express, go and comment, share your story with us too, or give us a call live on 083 913 3728. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, today we've been inspired by a motivational speaker and former Miss SA Tulisa Tolle and research psychologist Musa Masiza. It's all about optimizing your personal growth, and we're back with our guests now. Welcome back, ladies. Lovely. Yeah. I feel completely lit and completely inspired. What about yeah. you were in the kitchen, yeah. but I could Listening. see that you trying to be. You yeah, know. I think I'm inspired to grow as a cook. I think I always spend so much time cooking <laughs> in the kitchen over here, and I can actually do a little of it at home. I think this is the motivation. Like, get in there, Dan. Do it yeah. nicely, Dan. We do have a caller on the line with us right here on Afternoon Express. We'd love to hear from you. Hello. Hi, it's Teresa Tony from Cape Town. Hey, Teresa, how are you? I'm fine myself. Very good, okay. thanks. Go for it. I just wanted to say I was very inspired by Tuli this afternoon. Um, basically, I have also overcome two broken relationships. One was a very long-term 19-year marriage sure. and wow. going out. And then another seven-year seven relationship. And um, to the extent when they both broke up, I tried to take my life um, as I couldn't cope with um, just letting everyone down. I felt I totally let everyone down. Wow. And only after landing in a clinic and doing work of three weeks did I really discover that you do have to take ownership of your own choices in life and also that you have to take responsibility and face your mistakes mm -hmm. and realize that it's not all about the other person. Yeah. And once I took that, I was able to move forward and also having to let go of all the anger that comes with all this. Um, and I've had a, an amazing recovery. It's been a long recovery of six years. Oh. And every day I still work my recovery, but I, I feel inspired by where I've got to. And also putting myself first has been very important. Thank you. Sounds thank you so much, Well yeah. done. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's incredible how relationships oh, can is, make you feel like it's all your fault and that you clearly are a terrible yes, person in the anything process. Anything we're so. attached to, relationships, your job, money, or anything parenting. that has so much parenting, yeah. anything that we put our all into, because we all live for something. Yeah. And when we lose it, it feels like a, you know, the rug was pulled from your yeah. feet. It's, yeah. um, for many people, it's difficult to get back up, but we yeah. all have that capacity to do yeah. so. Um, sure. It's really just the will to live. We do have another caller on the line, Anonymous from KZN. Hello. Oh, hello. Welcome to Afternoon Express. What's your question Thank or comment? You. Thank you for talking to me. My story is I had to fight for my life when I was lying, dying and asking you. And I carried on living. I'm in a wheelchair. I'm disabled. That's, I have my challenges every day. But I pushed myself forward because I realized I had so much strength to fight for my life and the world to live. Mm. Wow. Sure. Thank Anonymous, you thank, so you. Much. thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for thank fighting. You. Congratulations. I'm so inspired by, by some of the callers that we're having today because like you, I think so many people take things in their life for granted. Exactly. And I don't think we ever really know the full gravity of our strength until we're faced with, with something that maybe, yeah. you know, yeah. forces us to grow yeah. and acknowledge that. And it's important for us to all see that there's so many incredible people out in our country fighting challenges that we cannot even be Absolutely. aware of. Yeah. And allow them to inspire us, allow them to be, let them like, share their yeah. stories with us and to be inspired by that. I mean, yeah. South Africans just as a collective have a great spirit. We're yeah. just able to overcome so much. Sure. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Well, you've mastered um, yeah. cooking us dinner, <laughs> Clem yeah, thank you. and Danilo. Steamed fish. This yeah. is a yeah. good, great way to start the week. It's actually one of the dishes that I cooked at the Alfie Food Studio. And really? it's also Marine Week this week, so why awesome. not? 
More time. Yeah. That may have to help with this one. Weeks, this should we stay away from the fish? <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're embracing them. We're embracing them. Embracing them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we like you. We like you. Thank you, you. so much. Sure. Like it. It. <laughs> thank you, Clem. Thank you so much sure. to all our guests for joining us. And today. honestly, thank you to South Africa yeah. for sharing all your stories with us on social media. It's been really incredible reading all your stories of overcoming these challenges. You're yeah. all beautiful people, and we'll catch you tomorrow on Afternoon Express live at five on SABC3. Good night. Happy eating. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Coming up tomorrow at Afternoon Express, we chat to Mzuzu Kile Soni, the founder of Brown Sense Market, and we chat to renowned TV producer and creator of Generations The Legacy, Fundi Vundla. Uh, never feel good production.